Hey, what's up guys? This is Alex from Epray.io and in this video we are going to give you an overview of the Ionic 5 UI components and their properties that are available out of the box in our visual app builder. To make it a bit more entertaining, we have created a sample app with all the UI components that are offered for Ionic 5 and modified it a bit so that it shows different modifications of these UI components. This video will demonstrate the great possibilities our default UI component set offers and explain what you need to do if you want to customize some components offered out of the box. We are also going to show you some tips and tricks you can use to simplify development, so stay with us and watch it until the very end if you are interested. Well, let's begin. First, we need to create the app. From the Apps page, click Create New App, Ionic 5 Component Sample App, and then click the Create button. In a moment, the app is created and the first thing you can see is our App Builder start page. On the left, you will also find the Project View section with all of the project data that has already been predefined, and we will definitely review it in detail a bit later. But now let's click Test to see what this sample app is about and how it works. Note that if you are launching this project for the first time, you will need to allow some time for the app preview to load. What you see now is the home page with a short app description and a menu button. There is also a three-line menu button in the header of the screen so that you can click either to open the menu. The menu list that opens includes the menu items, with the upper one being home and the rest representing different UI components. A click on home will take you back to the home screen, but if you click any other menu item, say button, a new screen will open where different modifications of this particular component can be reviewed. You are free to play around clicking different button instances and experimenting with different button behavior. In this screen, some buttons are made interactive, so if you click warning, for example, a modal window with the implemented warning message will be displayed. If you decide to exit this window, click outside the window frame or hit cancel. But if you click yes, delete it, another modal will open where the confirmation message can be seen. Click OK to return to the initial button screen where we can continue experimenting. On click, the buttons Success, Secondary, Danger and Custom button will also show some messages. Every time you need to exit the modal window, you can click outside the window frame. Take for example the secondary button model window to exit it, you will need to wait until the countdown ends, but if you do not want to wait, you can simply click outside this area. The other buttons here are created static and do not trigger any action but represent the possible button looks. Now let us click the three line button in the header to go back to the menu list. Scroll it down and select other. This page is the only one that demonstrates four different components in one place icon and image that are static, and link and toggle that have some embedded functionality. Let's right-click the link to open a new tab and go to the main appray.io site. Now switch back to the tab with the app review and check how the toggle works alternating its states from disabled to enabled. Ok, now let's go back to the main menu and review another menu element, HTML. After selecting it, you will be redirected to the screen with examples of different HTML layouts. There is also an active link and an iframe with some embedded video. The video playback can be started right away, you just need to click the corresponding control. From this page, you can also right-click the link and open a new tab to go to the main appry.io site, just like you did with the link component on the other page. But if you select to left-click, you will be navigated to the appray.io site within the iframe. Moreover, it will be possible to scroll down and navigate the site using the built-in menu. Similarly, you can have fun checking every component on the list one by one and to see what functionality they offer and how they can look like in the browser. But now we are going to dive into a detailed explanation of how each page of this app was defined. To do it, we will need to switch from the Mobile Preview tab back to the App Builder, the tab where we started our journey. In the left panel called Project View, locate the Pages folder and click the arrow button next to it to unfold the folder tree. All the pages with the components that we have just been able to see were defined here from this view, and now we will take a look at how it is all done. The first page on the menu list, App, also called index screen, 
is the container of the highest level for all app pages managing the general app behavior. Every Ionic 5 application contains the app page. If you click it, the page opens in the design view showing the page properties on the right. Note that to enable the menu functionality for the app, the menu property must be set to true. Now to review all the components added to this page, click the outline button in the left bottom corner of the mobile frame and get access to all the page's UI components grouped under the menu, content folder, you can unfold the page's folders by clicking the arrow button next to the corresponding folder's name. If you select any of the files on this list, this particular component will get selected and its properties list will be shown on the right. It will also be selected on the breadcrumbs chain on top of the mobile frame so that you can see its nesting and easily switch between the other related page components. First, let's open the list component and check its container and class properties. Now move on to its first child element, list item 1. Its item type property is set to item and the label selection is true. If you'd like to experiment with changing one of the list item properties, try changing the detail icon property to false and you will instantly see that the home icon disappeared from the components view in the mobile frame. Revert it to true to show the icon again. Similarly, if you deselect the label property, set it to false, the label will disappear from the list item. Revert it to true to show the label. You will see now that the label text was reverted to default. If you like, you can also look for another icon. All you need to do is click the actual home icon and search for the one that you like more. As you can see, there are so many options that it can take some time to find the needed one. So we can recommend selecting the icon groups to save your time. Switch from all to outline, field, sharp, or logo. Or even better, use search to filter icons. Just enter the home into the search window and hit enter. Now you can select the icon you like, for example, home sharp. The new icon will replace the original home icon. Now let's explore the appray.io routing feature. Unfold the routing folder and see that the routing path is set to the home page. This means that if this particular list item will be selected, you will be redirected to the app home page. And of course, you can customize this behavior by selecting another route named value. Note as well that when folded, the routing value, routed, indicates that some routing path is defined for this component. Now let's review one more component that is a child to the list item, item label. It can be selected on the breadcrumbs chain from the outline view or right in the mobile frame. There is not much you can do to customize this component, but you can still opt for renaming it or changing its text, color, position, slot, or mode. Also, you're free to provide the CSS utility classes that can actually be used on any element in order to modify its text, element placement, or adjust the padding and margin. We have already mentioned that if the menu property will be disabled, set to false, no menu will be shown for the app which will make it useless. Also, you need to be careful while experimenting with the disabling menu since this move will seriously change the app and its behavior by resetting options and removing all included components. However, we are free to try adding the split menu to the app page to see how the app will be affected. Besides the content folder, pages can also have headers and or footers. Let's click the home page and select its header to see its customizable properties on the right. Let's see how it's organized. Go back to the page component selected on the breadcrumbs chain from the outline view or click it right in the mobile frame and check out the header and footer properties under the properties tab. As you can see, the footer component is disabled for the page. If you enable it, the UI component will be added to the page components list and will become accessible for editing, so you can use it for your app just like it's done for the page header. In our app, the toolbar text has been added to the menu header of every screen to be displayed in the app. If you decide to hide the menu header but do not want to delete it permanently, you can do it from the outline view. Note that the crossed eye icon that gets crossed indicating that the screen has hidden items. Or use the direct hide show functionality that can be accessed by clicking the icon next to the components gear button, the so-called context menu. Lastly, let's review the context menu that is available for almost every UI component used in AppRe.io. 
To access it, look for a gear icon that appears when the needed component gets selected. Generally, the context menu consists of the clone, copy, paste, and delete options. You can try making clones of any component you like. However, we do not need two home list items in our app, so let's remove the list item one copy so that the page gets its initial UI. This can be done A by deleting the cloned component from the outline view, or B by selecting the delete option from under the context menu. Note that by confirming this operation, you agree to removing all included components. To make the app go back to its initial view, let's also disable the split pane property for index screen. Set it back to false. Now you can click test again to see that the app returned to what it looked like before we started experimenting with this app UI. That's it for the app page and now let's proceed with reviewing the other pages that were predefined for this project. The next page on the list is button. Click it on the project view list to open the button tab. Note that every new tab is open next to the previously reviewed one and will not be closed until you specifically decide to do so. You can, for example, close the app page as we are done with it for now. If you click the outline panel, you will see that the page has two main components, content and header. Both in their turn have more child components. Now unfold the content folder and select the grid component, and then check that it also has two child grid rows, each having two grid cell components that in their turn feature nested buttons. Let's review the upper grid row, select it to see that it has two grid cells, with each having a differently defined button. Note that in the case of the grid component, the context menu has one more option available, the green plus button, also duplicated by an add item option from the drop down menu, will add another nested item to the component. For example, if you confirm adding grid cell, it will be instantly added to the card. With the grid row selected, you can add the needed number of grid cells to it, and add a button to it. You can see now how the upper grid row changed having three cells instead of two. Now let's try applying custom color to the button we placed inside the cell and name it to dark. Now let's do some appri.io magic to this button. Expand the events panel from the bottom, and add a mouse over event to it, defining the action for this event as present toast. For this toast, set any message, for example, it's a button styled in dark, and enable the cancel button checkbox. Save the changes and enjoy them by clicking test. You will see that now when you go to the button page from the main menu preview, a new button can be seen and if you hover over it, our toast message appears. Click OK to close this dialog. What we were doing now is actually defining the app logic. In appri.io, it is very easy to do using our predefined events actions combinations. You can also assign several actions to the same UI component. For example, go back to the builder and add one more action for the same dark button under the events panel, but this time select the click event and the present alert action. Also, now you can choose to delete the mouse over event we added before by clicking the X button for it. But let's leave it for now just to see if both will work as expected in test. Save the event and click test once again. When you try clicking the button, both events will fire as expected, and you will be able to see which one is to keep if you do not need to use both, of course. There is a wide selection of other combinations of events and actions. You can try to make any of your components, not only buttons like in this case, unique and if interested, you can check out this page explaining how app events are handled in appray.io. If you are quite comfortable adding more customization to your app, you will find our run TypeScript action really useful. This is very handy if you need more flexibility. For example, if you check what logic is defined for the rest of the buttons that belong to the same grid, you will see that all of them feature the run TypeScript action, but provided with different script details. Select the button, expand the events panel and click the green pencil button to see what's inside. Let's now modify the simple code for the button named button. Now provide your custom description for this event. For example, swall.fire, hi, this is a custom button, success. You can also rename it, change its size, shape, or other properties under the properties panel. 
For a better understanding of how such changes will be reflected, check the sample buttons placed below. These buttons have no actions added and only demonstrate how can a button component look like. When finished, save and see the result. You can also review how the other active buttons on this page were defined to trigger the actions they performed when you test them. Success, Secondary, Danger. Similarly, you can play around experimenting with the other components on this page applying different styles or customizing their behavior. By the way, you can always get detailed information on any UI component by clicking its Docs page link under the Properties panel. That's it for the page content, and now let's take a quick look at its header. It also has some nested UI components that come by default and can be customized. First, Toolbar Title. Note that the Toolbar Title property must be set to True to allow adding a name to its title. Second, and a menu button placed inside the default toolbar buttons component. Note that the component type of the button is set to Ionic menu button, which is necessary to provide correct page interaction with the app menu. Make sure that you will see the similar toolbars defined for every other app page when later browsing the app structure. All of them feature a toolbar with appropriately changed toolbar titles and a menu button redirecting to the app menu page. Well, it looks like we have covered every item on the button page, and now you can have a better understanding of how to approach modifying the UI components on any page of this app. Now, when you decide to try applying your custom changes to any other app page, you know how to use the AppRead.io tools that were demonstrated when we were discussing the button page. However, there is one more important thing we will need to cover before you have a full picture of the organization of this sample app, and this relates to how the app homepage was defined. On the one hand, this page is similar to the rest of the sample app pages that feature different Ionic 5 components, for example, button or card. But there is something that makes it specific. This page is the one that opens first and has a button that navigates to the main app menu. If you click Project Routing, you will see that the app default route is defined for the home page, which means that this page is set as a primary app route. Let's open its outline view to inspect the page UI. Mostly, the page reminds the other app pages by having content and header components with some child components. However, its button component is provided with a very outstanding functionality. Its click event is assigned with the open menu action which means that if you click this button, you will be instantly redirected to the main app menu. That's it for the home page, actually. In general, in this video, we made a review of only three app pages, but we hope that further exploring our sample app will be useful in your learning AppRe.io and help you in creating your own application that will look unique and appealing to your users. And last but not least, we have prepared a very detailed document with the step-by-step -step instructions on how you can recreate this sample app in full or learn how some particular page and or UI component was created. Feel free to check it to learn more about creating apps with AppRe.io. We guarantee that no questions about working with AppRe.io components will be left unanswered. To learn more about AppRe.io and its features, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.